Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Flip Side, a GYTO podcast where we break down, share, and challenge flip perspectives and insights on different hot topics in education. We are so excited to be back in the studio with another brand new episode today. I have Wade and Chris with me. On the flip side, chairs, not the couch. But we do have a special guest coming to the couch. We are so excited to have the one and only April Graves today talking about a hot topic. And I already know we all have very different opinions on this. So it's it's going to be good. good. It's It's going to be be a good one. We we specifically invited April for this. Number one, because she's just so fun. But number two, we are talking all things homework today. So homework, I forget the tagline of this episode. Homework, uh... It's like productive or yeah, not necessary. Yeah. I don't really remember. Well, yeah. it's, you can catch you'll it see the tagline, the title, yeah. but we are excited to dive in and talk all things homework and the role that it plays in school every day. Let's go. All right, we have had a busy summer, so I finally this weekend got to catch up on all. I'm still things. recovering. Netflix still recovering. We'll be but for a year. Exactly. We're almost, Talk to we're, me next National. We are almost there. We are almost there already in future mode of rocker school and all the things there. But I'm finally getting to catch up and rewatch some Netflix favorites from the summer and Ooh, this I need weekend. A good show. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. I reached out to actually twice now in the past um, two months. I've watched the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Hollywood. You've watched uh, it twice. Twice. Well, that, series. Well, that's because we so know we we, we we know um Taylor. Yeah, Taylor, Taylor's yeah. not in it. I, I needed her commentary the second time I watched it. But it is so stinking good. If you have not watched have not the been. Dallas Cowboys America Sweetheart documentary, just the heart of the world. It is the most incredible. Th- I now want to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader because yes, it, it has broke all stereotypes all of all anything that's there. I've had a lot of friends that have been NBA dancers or NFL it's dancers totally throughout. Different. And the Dallas Cowboys cheater, cheerleaders, it's like the Rockettes. It is. They're bigger than it, the Rockettes. It, it really <laughs> no, is. just the Rockettes, it's, it's, but yeah. the intentionality, it is just absolutely incredible. So shout out to them. The opening number for Nationals next year in Dallas is going to have to be Thunder. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, and Taylor said she might get some Dallas Cowboys shoelers there. So let's, we, uh, let's make it happen. Oh, let's Dallas. go. We're already working on it. But it, oh. it, the, the way the storyline, the emotions, the I actually know one of the girls, Reese, she was Miss Florida's outstanding team that I didn't even know she was a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. But what I didn't know, and if you've watched it, you kind of seen this, is that these girls come from all across the country. Yeah. They commit themselves. They actually stay at the Gaylord Texan. That's where a lot of them stay this year. <laughs> wow. Which is where we have our conference. And th- they commit themselves for weeks to this training camp, which is like many dance teams do. But, but these are they're grown not from women. that area. For the grown women. Correct. With other, with other jobs. Yeah. I do they, they have other jobs. Yeah. yeah. They're, I know that they're much. They're orthodontists. They're dentists. They have all these full-time jobs. Um, obviously, they're underpaid, all the things. But... It is just their stories are incredible. The process is incredible. The leadership is incredible. The it was just amazing that I had to watch it a second time. How many times? Um, how many times did you cry? I didn't. I did not cry. Sh- I didn't cry. Shut up. It's not a. I mean, you no. do feel like Shocking. it pulls out your heartstrings a little bit. I didn't cry necessarily. Yeah. I was just so intrigued by their story. Their commit. It's it is next level. Like I thought I knew. Like oh. Di- cu- like sports dance teams because I have a lot of friends that have gone that that path. It's it is, not that. It is. Well, it to watch is it. top tier because I know oh. nothing about sports dance teams. So it is I was so good. It is so good. It. So what have you guys been watching? I mean, we could talk about that. Okay, I mean, I've, 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 watched, that forever, I've watched one episode of that, and I was I, I thought it was really. It, you have you to did. Watch, you have to yeah. watch them all. You fall asleep because I tried to watch it, and you were like, "I don't want to watch this." Oh no, we watched it together, wow. and you fell asleep. And I you probably need it. to do it now that you have a little more time, yeah. you know, like. And he will appreciate it once he gets into it. He just doesn't like the thought of like because that's not his vibe. It is, but not, he will it is appreciate not like it. the original show, which is very different. So if anyone's seen the original, yeah, I've seen the original. That's why I didn't watch it. No, that was more like almost like a dance mom's vibe right. where they're like following the process and yeah, the girls right. and things like that, which was great. And I love that as well. But that's why I this continue to watch is, this one because I it liked is it. It's probably one of the best docuseries. The way they wow. filmed it and followed the girls, just the storyline of it is amazing. I okay, well, it. we have been watching something very old. Well, not very old, but it came out in 2020. That we we're even- back in 2020. <laughs> Back when we were young. Back, oh, truly. I, I just asked Wade the other day. I was like, what did we do in 2020? And he's like, basically, we watched shows on TV because Maverick was one. And I was like, how did we miss this one? But anyways, we had started watching um, 
Oh my gosh. With Jake Gyllenhaal on Apple TV. Bent in there something? No. I forget. <sighs> something in a... Well, this is... But anyways, well. so yeah, this one just, came up as a record. watch that, just yeah. figure out the name. Something with Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. Um, Anything with Jake Gyllenhaal. But this popped up and it was, it's called Defending Jacob. Oh. And it's really good. Mm. It's like... It's got Chris Evans. It's... All about so following this crime that happened in the community and who did it, which obviously defending Jacob, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It the murder is placed on this eighth grade boy. I think yeah, so uh, Chris Evans plays the And if it has Chris Evans, so what is Chris, it Chris Evans I always get the Chris's mixed Instant up in my yeah. head. Like, so Captain America, Chris Evans. Yeah, that doesn't all help that, me. But yeah. he, he produced it and uh he's the lead actor in it, but he plays the role of a D the DA. Um, and his son is in eighth grade and, uh, he has this crime that happens and he's investigating this crime of this eighth grade boy who passes away. He gets killed and then it goes on and on. It's and so it's good. Really it cool, is man. so, so good. And the good thing is, is because it came out in 2020, all the episodes are available. Cause I hate that more than anything when you, they release an episode a week, you know, old school TV. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is why I hated waiting every week for full house to come on every Friday night, um, on TGIF. But all the episodes are out. So that's been a really good one. And then we also watched recently um, Apples Never Fall. Apples Never yeah, Fall. Apples never fall. Yep, that that was also very good. Also the About boys, the lab going missing. Catching up on the boys. That's what I watch. Hope doesn't watch that. No, I haven't but gotten into I that one. the boys and then, yeah. Yeah, so we Defending went, Jacob, 10 at, t 11 yeah, out of 10. Stuff. If you like crime, murder, mystery, like that type of stuff, that's your that's your go-to. We love it. So Manifesting in the World, Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders, Nationals, <laughs> 2025. Okay, that was my list, yep. Thunder, I mean, I'm, I'm going to still talk about this. I literally was practicing my living room. I was telling Dee on the phone the other day. They, in the opening of every Dallas You're Cowboys Cheerleaders thunder? game, yes, that after watching the docuseries yeah. because they have to move in just four counts. If you know it's on like bump, 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 they have to move every five yards to the half, one, half line and they've done this forever. It's like a tradition. So in this training camp, they literally, they are, they have to move in succinct lines to that spot. What is the song? Generation. Let's just it's get like, Taylor on the thunder, podcast and we can have like a whole. It's like ACDC maybe? Oh, Thunderstruck. Well, they call no. it Thunder is the dance of it. Oh, is I that what it's called? I don't know if that's... I, I can hear if the beat. If it's ACDC, it'd be Thunderstruck. I don't know. How does it go? It's like Thunder. Yeah. Thunder. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's the song. That's the song they've used forever, but they call it the Thunder Dance or whatever. Well, I vote we get Taylor on the podcast. We have a... Yeah. Should we need... Oh, yeah. We need a, like after hours of the... That, that. Was, what was it like as a teacher? And and was like, you've been so tell me about this girl. girl. <laughs> Do you know this girl? Like, tell me about this five-year vet, all the things. Like, it's amazing with the insider scoop. So shout out to Taylor Brown our favorite uh, Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. But we're going to dive into today's episode with April on all things, not Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, but equally as <laughs> exciting homework. Here we go. Let's dive into it on the flip side. April all day in the house. They just missed the all. Side. I told Chase, I was like, you need to start recording from the minute they walk in because you just missed all the good. I know, she hope gave it, us all the tips. Exactly. First of all, she has the cutest darn pencil necklace on. Yes. Ever seen, which See is it so on YouTube if you're watching. Her. Then we were talking about her nails, and I'm like, I've always wanted to glitter like this on my nails. And she's like, oh, I take it to the salon myself. We're like 20 minutes behind because Hope oh, and April wanted to talk some. about nail tips. And for then, <laughs> I, know, I know April lives close to us, but I always thought she was like, because in Atlanta, you can be two miles apart and be an hour away. An hour away. away. And so, but now, I did not know your school is literally like two miles. Yeah, it's not. I said, I would have been up in your classroom. We could, and now math, I told her she probably won't weigh, not me, because math ain't my, I can, I can do it. I can practice. But we would have fun together. I'm like, sure. What I'm gonna come to your classroom this year. Okay. I'm coming. I've been in the same room. For oh my gosh! I hope you make a That's balloon arch and everything. Years. Ten years. Wow. And I'm about to do my balloon arch. I was just online looking for the balloons that I want for back to school oh. to go on my like so a cute. board. So. She does a brand new balloon arch every month. Every month. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, and a, and a real, of and a she real does. to go with it as you go through. <laughs> and if you didn't know, she's also a phenomenal skate. Like, she can skate like you would not believe. No, no, really, I'm a faker. But no. I can skate. Well, you, but I can't skate like, like, you fooled me. I wouldn't, Usher would not have hired me. <laughs> <laughs> be very clear. Be very clear. I would not have gotten hired by Usher. I disagree. Because I've seen you on roller skates. And oh my gosh, it's amazing. A, a woman of many talents. Uh, seriously. You. Seriously. But April, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, what you do in education. All things. Other than uh, your pencil. All things April Graves. Other all thing being stuff. fabulous. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Of course. It was such a peaceful drive. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank drive. you for having me. It, it really is. And um, I am a originally from Dallas, Texas. So y'all were just talking about the cowgirls. Oh, yeah. Uh, cowboys, cheerleaders. <laughs> anyway, uh, I have been here in 
well, I've been in Atlanta, yeah, for since I came to college, graduated, and I started teaching. Literally, I graduated and started teaching two months later, and here I am, 25 years later. Wow! And I still love it. Um, and so I'm very proud of that, and I'm proud that I'm a career teacher. Yes. Yeah, Great. like I take pride in it. Yes. I when, you, like, so t- when you say you love it, if you know April or you follow her on social media, it joy just like oozes out of you in your classroom. Well, thank I mean, you. you in general, but especially in your classroom, like it does. How oh, this is not even the topic for this. We probably need to have you're you probably. Back, I was about to say the we, same we, words, we, we and I bet you're about you. to yes. ask the same question. Yes, tell me. How, we're gonna have a whole nother episode. And you're gonna come back, but how as a veteran teacher? I was gonna ask the same question. Say it again. Twenty-five. Twenty-five years in education. How do you still find that spark and joy? I know it's not the topic, but for people who are in the like year three or year four and they're like, I'm done, I'm burned out. What is the, what is the magic sauce that you have found? I'm going to start with the first thing yes. is that I do believe that this was what God created me for. Mm-hmm. And it's my ministry. And like mm-hmm. when it came to me, when I was, a, I started college as a math major and I thought I was going to be an actuary and work in statistics and make a whole lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, but at the same time, I was doing a volunteering at an after school program. And I love the after school program. And I initially was just supposed to go one day a week. After about two or three weeks, I was like, well, I'm gonna go two days a week. Yeah. By the end of my freshman year, I was going five days a week wow. to the after school program. At the my last week there before it was time for me to go home for the summer, I was like boohoo crying. And I was like, oh my God, I think I'm supposed to be a teacher. Like this is what I'm supposed yeah. to do. Mind you, my big daddy, who was a fourth grade teacher, would always tell me when I was growing up, April, you can be a teacher. I was like, no, big daddy. Nah, I'm not a not <laughs> no, I'm gonna be an actress mm-hmm. or an action. I can see that with you too. Like I can see it's that. It's either gonna be one of those things. Well, I went to a performing arts high school. So I'm either gonna do one of those things, be right. an actress or an actuary. Yeah. One of those. <laughs> and um, but then the summer after my freshman year, I worked at this um uh, corporate office. I hated it. <laughs> it was I hated that some yeah. job. Yeah. I was like, who does this? I did, I did an office job <laughs> one year. Or yeah. I, think. I was yeah. like, I'm out of here. I hated it. <laughs> and so then when I got back to school, I was like, I'm going to be a teacher. Oh, I'm to my major. And everybody was like, you're changing your major? I was like, yeah. I'm <laughs> changing yeah, my didn't. major. Yeah. And I hadn't looked back. I think it's been the best thing. So I think that's part of it is that yeah. I do believe that I was created for yep. it. You have a purpose bigger than your profession. Yes. Yep. Yes. And so that's part of it. And then the other thing is I have a model where I work at work. Mm-hmm. I also believe that I have 180 days. So I always be like, I got 180 days. So if I get back to school, yep. like after Get Your Teach On, literally, you start. I get back yeah. right away. I, I come back at 9 right. p.m. on the 25th. Yeah, that's I how it works. I get work on the 25th. Yeah. Oh, but I'm like, it it's going to be okay, April. Okay. I might be tired, yep. but all I got to do is get my room, yep. my furniture in place. Yep. And then after that, I'm like, I still got 180 days. So I don't like pressure myself, if you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there's certain things that I'll prioritize. I'm like, okay, these are my top three. Mm-hmm. And then everything else, guess what? It'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, I love it. It'll okay. be there tomorrow. So I want to do a whole nother yeah, episode. Yeah, you're, with coming, you. you're coming yeah. back because you're close by. So we're going to do a whole nother episode with diving into like finding your spark and keeping that passion right, because you it's can't so let yourself needed. burn out. Correct. If you burn out, you're done. Yeah, you quit. Yeah. You yeah. 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 Spark. And I feel it's like too, to I mean, back. like one of the biggest things that I have been, that I know you do, all of us do. And I think it's what's kept us passionate about this profession is break the rules too. Like uh, I, know, I, I have always believed that you do not ask for permission. That's right. You ask for forgiveness. That will mm-hmm. save you as a teacher. Yeah. yeah. Will. That will save you. So we'll do a whole other episode yeah, about I've that. Never yeah, been that I've because never been a big rule follower anyway. You, yeah. That could no. be good at that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, we'll all yeah. the things in the future episode. But <laughs> today's episode is all about homework. Is it worth it? Enhancing learning or wasting time? So on the flip side, we kind of break down different perspectives the on tag different line. topics. There it, is. there it is. Yeah. I had to pull it out because I was like, what is the actual title of the episode? But enhancing learning or wasting time when it comes to homework because it is something that a lot of people have different feelings on. Mm-hmm. Some teachers have already gone back to school this school year. Some are just starting up. So homework is a big topic for teachers, for parents, for students on what's the homework? What is it going to look like? And mm-hmm. it's almost a kind of added pressure in some ways for some teachers or for some parents. So I want to really break down this episode. What does homework look like, especially for you? What is it enhancing learning? Do you think it's just wasting time? Or do you think that homework maybe is kind of just checking off a box because we've always done it this way? Mm-hmm. and what that looks like. So, Wade, I want to start with you before I even go to April mm-hmm. because 
we invited April for a reason because I already know what she's going to say. Yeah. But I'm curious, just before we dive into they kind of told the, me what you're going to say, what it looks like. I wanted to know. Oh, I was on I a Zoom. I, know, I was on a Zoom with know. April talking about um, her national session, and she dove in, and I was like, oh, in six months from now, we're going to have her on a podcast episode about that <laughs> because she is. She had so many good things, and I was like, "Don't." I mean, when, you, it, when you've you been say. in the game twenty five years, yeah, you, 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 you might need to listen to to what. Yeah, well, think, I'm listening. I'm what listening, girl. Saying. I'm listening. Okay, okay. So, Wade, talk about homework in your classroom, yeah. middle school, elementary school. What have you seen, and what was your kind of feelings towards homework in general? Because I know not every school has the same belief on homework. Not every teacher has the same belief on homework. Right. Not every parent has the same belief on homework. Um, I don't think any student is like, "Yes, I can't wait for my homework," but. There's different perspectives on yeah. every kind Lots of Lots of perspectives yeah. on homework. Yeah, I mean, I, I think with, with any homework, I mean, I, I look at it as practice, um, mm -hmm. extra practice, and um, that's how our, our learners and our students can, can grow and, and be excellent um, in whatever it is. That being said, I don't think all homework is necessary. Um, I would always limit the homework that I would give um, in elementary school, in middle school, um, for example, I mean, even if it's math, I make sure that my students know what they are to do because if they go home and they practice, even if they practice five problems or whatever it is, they could practice it the wrong way and then they're definitely screwed up, right? Mm -hmm. And so a limited amount of homework, um, I prioritized when I was in elementary school, I prioritized reading homework, ELA homework, math. I mean, it would be maximum maybe 10 problems if if it was necessary and they would all um kind of support each other um i think an emphasis on n the no homework i i see value in some homework um so i think that homework should be given because i do think on. on that point i do think a lot there is very this side or the other on homework it's no homework should be given before this age and like it's a jurassic they need kids yeah. need to be kids and this is what needs to happen um i'm here sure. i'm i was interested when you said that you would prioritize ela homework over math because yeah, me as an ela teacher i did the opposite as prioritizing homework so when i was self-contained teaching all i prioritized math homework as additional practice over reading Oh, obviously wow. at home reading and just like reading in general minutes yeah. per night that was like a non-negotiable for me as just like picking up a book actually diving into it and falling in love with reading and just kind of well, the reading. Um, what that looks like but i never found a system that worked for me to have it meaningful but i remember my first year of teaching it was like homework was a must this was the packet it was going to be given on monday they would have till friday and that's just what was done at the school yeah. that i was at and i was like Correct. this is this overwhelming is for me and i and i as a teacher I'll be honest, I did not follow through like on all of that. Like 25 math problems just, or whatever just it is. Just like, nonsense what kind of world? work. Yeah, like doing? rewrite these spelling or vocab. Like oh, oh when you know better, gosh. you do better now. Spelling but like in the beginning of teaching, I remember it was more busy work for homework than anything. It's just because I think parents wanted homework. Um, but Hope, we'll get to your, because I know you're biting at it. I was, no, I, I really, it, to me, when you said spelling, that was the only thing that I'm like, guys, we should no longer Correct. be spelling. Correct. Exactly. When you know better, you Just do better. Look at but I remember the beginning of like that teaching is, career. That yeah, is what, that needs to be a shift. That's what everyone did. That is what everyone did when we started yeah. teaching. It's oh, like yeah. that's what it looks like. Times are changing. I mean, home. Correct. Uh, just just to kind of finish. I mean, for for me, that the way that I that I would use homework would be, they go home. Can I use what they're doing at home tomorrow to amplify their instruction and, and amp that up? And so. It wouldn't just be they go home and we're done or right. they go home and we review it the next day. No, we're, we're going to use that. And so the re reason why I would prioritize reading in ELA is because I could integrate that in science and in social studies. And so if I didn't have time for that during the day, you're still practicing those reading components and it was leveled and all of those things. But we'd have those conversations in class. Yeah. Okay. I'm turning things over to the vet. Yeah. Now. Okay. I, I want to. <laughs> She, I'm she is a I'm like it on my coffee. I'm I love it. You, on my coffee. Yeah, <laughs> usually we dive in, but I, I know I know she's been internalizing everything we're saying and be like, oh, I got something to say. Which is what the so, flip side is. Exactly what you want to say. All about. So, first of all, talk about your experience within your classroom, 25 okay. years. Um, your feelings on homework first. I'll leave it an open floor. You take it where, where you take it where you okay. go. Okay. I'm excited. So I have Me a lot too. of I do have a lot of feelings around homework. Yes. Just like Wade said, I believe that the practice is good and research does show that kids benefit from a lot of repetition and practice. Mm -hmm. Now, I think homework should be practice and not a part-time job. Mm. So, and I tell them that. that on a t-shirt. <laughs> yes. Everybody always has a quote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so like it's not a part-time job. I don't think it should take you all night. Um, I, am, I do believe I give one sheet of homework 
but I give it on Monday, is due on Friday. Got it. Mm. Yep. And it's, so there's a Monday column, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Every now and then there might be something on the back if I feel like it's just something else additional I want them to practice, but normally it's just that front sheet. Um, and I tell them, now it's up to you how you get it done. Some kids will say, I'm going to do it all on Monday night because I got to go to karate practice on Tuesday. I got soccer on Wednesday and mm. Thursday I need to chill. Okay. However you want to do it, it's fine with me because I am a stickler because if I give it to you on Monday, oh, I want it back on Friday. <laughs> like I'm looking for it. But I also let them know because I respect children and I respect their time. Like I right. respect somebody to respect my time. So if I give it, I'm going to grade it mm. because that's out of respect. Mm -hmm. So, and also, I'm also not going to give them more than I want to grade. Yeah. So that's why it's usually just the front sheet. Every now and then, got something on the back. Every, like I said, every now and then. But it's also intentional homework. So it's past, present, future tense. I usually make my own homework. Past, things that we've already taught and learned. Same. Present, what yep. we're working on. It just maybe a twee bit of future tense just to get your taste buds ready just, for Just what we're doing, yep. Right. So, and if they feel like, oh, I, could, I didn't understand this one. That's, that's okay. That's fine. Let me know. It's coming okay. up. Right. Yeah, it's coming soon to yeah. a classroom near you. How does that affect their grade? Is grade for completion? So, no, no, no. Okay. It's <laughs> grade for correction. <laughs> but I will say this. So, like, let's say out of the week, there's like 15 things that they would have to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And usually that's a lot. Because normally when I'm graded yeah. homework, it might be, a, it's usually out of 12 or out of mm -hmm. 15. Yeah. Every now and then they may have had to do more than 15 things. And that was for things. the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's for the week. So if it's something that's a future tense problem and I know that I hadn't really like dug yep. in on it, I'm not going to grade that. One. Got it. I just got to see what you do with it. Yep. Because, to plan for your next right, step. Just see what you week, do with maybe. it. Because you may see that the whole class, Matt, has they, got they got it. If they got it, I'm not going to So it's just a way for me that. to I've see how they, how they do. So I am intentional about the homework. So I do think homework should be intentional. I think they need the extra practice. And again, if I give it, I'm going to grade it. That's just out of respect for the students. And they like it, too, because it's so funny when, although I do have another thing, too. So the week before <laughs> break. Give it all to us. And they'll be like, we're not having homework. I'm like, we got Christmas break coming up next week. I don't give homework the week before a, grade, a break because I don't feel like grading it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, but I wanted some homework. Yeah. Literally before Christmas break, these kids were like, I wanted some homework. I said, okay, <laughs> I'm about to copy out some homework. So I went and ran off this like color by number sheet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, this is due on Friday. And I was like, are you serious? I was like, it's due on Friday. Y'all ask me for some homework. Color this Christmas tree and bring it back. <laughs> and so some of the kids were like, are you serious? And I'll say that. But I think it's that mindset. <laughs> that it's, lo it's low stakes of pressure, right? You you said 15 for the week. So mm -hmm. think of the time commitment of that. Some are doing 20, 30, 40 a night no, sometimes. No, no, no. And I mean, I remember growing up, it would be pages and pages. And then they would be like odds only. But still, that's like 20. And I'm like, this is taking so much time. So Too much time. I think they know and probably why they are so receptive to it is this is minimal of my time. It's Very meaningful much. to my learning. And that's why they have the week before Christmas break when you're like, there's no homework. They want something more because it's not an extra task to them. And there's not that narrative at home. I would assume of, oh my gosh, we got to sit down and do our homework. We got to get like, yeah. and that's a mm -hmm. chore for parents as well. And, well, and that's the thing too. Usually at the beginning of the school year when we have like our back to school night and I'm telling parents, because I don't start homework either until maybe after about a month that we've been in school because it's so much new stuff anyway when it comes to, well, I teach fourth grade. You got to see where they're at. To and you see where they are. Yeah. And I also need to start like my classroom expectations. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's up a notch. Yeah. What you're used to. Yeah. And so <laughs> I'm trying to let you get acclimated to that. And then I'll pull in the homework because that's, that's a responsibility right. for you as yeah. well as the student. As a human too. Right. They need and, I'm, and I'm just yeah. like, okay, homework goes home, have it in your folder. And I'm like that too. I'm like your name, date and number need to be on it. I gave it to you nice and crispy. Don't bring it back to me with nice and blood crispy. and guts on it. Like April, oh, how many times day. have we Don't seen play. this? No, I like. I do not like it. And I tell them literally. I said, look, you see how nice and clean this sheet of paper is. I said, you see this nice folder you got. Mm -hmm. You know, put it in your folder and keep it neat. I said, if you bring it back and it's crumbled up. Lucky for you, I'm gonna have some extra copies because you're gonna have to redo it. <laughs> I'm not gonna take it. And you it. set that expectation. Yeah, That's the difference. At the you're very setting beginning, the I'm setting the expectation of what you expect. It's ex expect, and you gotta respect. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, 
if I gave you a sheet of homework and it was crumbled up and it had my jelly on it from my <laughs> Oh, yeah. Or if I said, well, the dog just, uh, the dog kind of got the tail right here. <laughs> no, you just, that's just so gross. You know, and so I won't. We should write a book about homework stories. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What you've heard about homework. Or your nose started bleeding and you thought it was okay just to wipe it off and then hand it to, no. I'm going to go with no. I'm not uh, taking that. That's a hard uh, pass. Yeah, that is a hard pass. Yeah. Yeah. And so I have that conversation before I send home the first piece of homework. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is, like, I'm giving it to you. This is how I expect it back. Yeah. Yep. Again, I have a conversation about now. It's today's Monday. When is it due? Friday when you come home. When you come home. When you come back to class. I said, but you have to decide how you do it. Yeah. You have to decide, okay, am I going to do a few of them on Monday? And it's good time management. Yeah, let me ask. It is, it's so a good yeah, life skill. Yeah. yeah. And that, because yeah. the kids are busy. All of that combined are, is a good life skill. They are busy. The the accountability, the everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, are you de you're departmentalized? Yes. Okay. So I do math and just, science. You do math and science. Mm -hmm. So with your other teachers on your team or whatnot where the kids go to, do you talk to them about the amount of homework that you're giving and that they're giving. And so, because, very, because we know it's math, but then I remember when we were departmentalized, we'd be like, what the, these kids are, are spending two hours at night on homework because of what so-and-so and so-and-so gave them. I, man, I feel bad for them. I'm not going to give, do y'all have those conversations? We do have those conversations. I will say this, in my experience, a lot of times the reading homework, so, to tell them to read 20 minutes a night. Right, that's... You know, that's it been some of the homework that they are given. Mm -hmm. And so they they haven't been given a whole lot in other subjects, mm -hmm. in my experience, over the years. Intentional. Got to be in yeah, intentional. Yeah, meaningful, meaningful. meaningful. Or, and then there's people who don't want to grade it, or they yeah. don't want to look back at it, or they just going to collect it and then toss it. So then if you're going to do that, don't give it. Right. right. I, that, right? I, do, like, I didn't want to point that out. Yeah. 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 And children are people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't waste their time either. Yeah, right. don't look at it as completion. Oh, you did your homework, check off. You're mm -hmm. actually looking for it for who mastered what. What's the next steps? And using it to guide your instruction right. of that practice. And I think that's a huge misconception of homework is that it's a check mark or turn it yeah, in or here it is. Really, just another kind of exit ticket. Correct. Mm -hmm. To see who's got what going on. And then I tell the kids that. Exactly. Too. Said, now, if you get to Wednesday and you feel like more than half of this, I'm not capable of doing Let me stop. Not. You better come talk to me. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, you yeah. need to come talk to me. But most of them feel like, oh, I was able to do it without any help. And that's the goal because we've done enough work around this same right. concepts and skills in class that when you go home, your parents as, as, don't as have to be sit next yes. to you. And, yeah. and, I, and I love that, that your homework is, is past, present, and future. I mean, I did kind of the same thing you did, but I wouldn't, I didn't, I didn't grade the homework. I checked for completion and they would whatever get in whatever, uh, miss some recess or whatever, they didn't do it or to stay in. But when Which they I'm fully against that. Yeah, you know, I am too. So, no, they, they would still walk around. I've been biting but, my tongue on a lot of things. That one I could not bite <laughs> my tongue on. That was back in the day. <laughs> However, or silent lunch or whatever it would be. But oh. I, I would use that. I would yeah. use that. Hey, they I, did it. Though. I know, but flip side, baby, I'm just like, they I'll did it. bite my tongue on some things, some things I can't. They did it. They, they would eat lunch <laughs> Also, with me. different time in education when we started teaching to where we Correct. are now. What but I, I would yeah. use that, and we would do something called uh, warm-up quizzes every day. So it was just five questions. Again, like, it wasn't past, present, and future. It was just mm -hmm. past and present. Mm -hmm. But it was built off almost exactly what you're talking about with that homework mm -hmm. worksheet. Because I could see where they were, and then I would grade that warm up quiz every day, and it was mm -hmm. just to see very effective. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah, also it all rolls together. So I started my math period off with what I call a math motivator, which is just like your warm up, bell ringer, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But I also make those too because I also want those to be past, present, and future. And so, really, by the time they get homework after about a month of being in school, even though this year I don't think I started homework until October the first. But anyway, <laughs> by the time they get homework, they have basically seen yeah. over and over again in class, oh, this is what we do in mm -hmm. class. Oh, I've seen these on yeah. Math Motivator before. Oh, this is right. how we do it. So it, it goes down with ease. And, like, I believe in that, too. Like, I give them an appetizer so that yep. when you get the main course, like, everything's going go. down mm -hmm. easy. Like, I've been here before. Got it. I think also what makes it so successful is that you're intentionally creating it based on what you taught that day. I think a lot of times homework is seen and that's going to take time that's going to take a little extra of your time mm -hmm. as a teacher to prepare for that just like you would with your lesson but i think a lot of times homework is seen as oh this page out of the workbook and then here go or mm -hmm. this work 
that's not meaningful or intentional. It's not even aligned sometimes to what you, ta- even if it is the same lesson, mm-hmm. it's not It's not exactly what you did that day, that time. It's very broad, very generic. Mm-hmm. So I think the intentionality of it is what's made it so successful for you. Mm-hmm. But I'm curious, 25 t- years into education, have you always had this model with homework? How did it kind of change? How did you get to a place where obviously you've been rocking with this for a while and you've seen the results? Right. So what advice would you have for people that maybe don't have a system for homework in general, you've seen these benefits. What would you say to that? Okay, so I will say this. When I first, my first year teaching, I taught first grade. Then I looped up and taught second grade for a while. Mm-hmm. So the way that looks mm-hmm. is totally different than how it started to look when I went up to teach star fourth. Like te- mm-hmm. I was have been between fourth and fifth grade, but mostly fourth. So it started looking different. And then my expectation became different. And so I feel like when I was doing first grade, I don't even know if I remember what they, I don't think I am gay. <laughs> She's like, I should put that one out of my memory. Yeah, come on, y'all. I don't, who knows? But, and then second grade, I taught for about eight years. I don't remember giving much homework other than reading, ELA, spelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's all right. I did too, that girl. Is, that, that, is, that, is, that is what we were taught when we started Thanks. teaching. That, now it, we know better. So. Yeah, and then that age, like, we did a lot of, we did sax and phonics mm-hmm. at that time. And so they did a lot of, like, phonics type homework Yeah, mm-hmm. when I did second grade. And mm-hmm. then I moved up and I was like, and when I became departmentalized, I was like, oh, no, we got to have some repetition and some mm-hmm. practice going on here. And so that's when I started saying, okay, I got to give a weekly thing because it's got to be easy for me too. Yeah. That's another re- way that I don't get burnt out. Now I will tell you this, when I created the homework in the beginning, and it is a lot of your time. Yeah. You give a lot yeah. of time on the front end. Yeah. Now where I am every now and then I'll make new ones, but a lot of them I can like, I have because so you know what you're teaching and what you're teaching and you yeah. can match it. So yeah. now I can say, okay, we could do week three right now. I'm not going to do week mm-hmm. one or two, but are we ready for week three? Sometimes I go from week three homework and I'm about to skip to Wherever week your eight. kids are. Yeah. 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 So because I have enough of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And it's intentionally, so you can, you know where mm-hmm. they're at based on the intention. Right. And so I can look and be like, okay, they can do this one this week, you know. But yeah. So I just went through a process of like, okay, I got to make it easy for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to get burnt out. And it's easy for me to have something as opposed to, like you say, looking through a workbook saying, here, pull this, pull this, pull that. Yeah. Staple yeah. it together. Correct. Send it home. Yeah. And that was kind of my only experience starting with homework as first year mm-hmm. teacher, the team I was, it was a very much that this is what it is. Every day, every Monday is going to be this, every Tuesday. Is, it's mm-hmm. very kind of almost robotic that it was. So I always had a negative taste in my mouth about homework, but because everyone else did it and it was the expectation of my team. I was like, guess I have to do like do yeah. it. And then if you don't, the parents are like, well, where's the homework? What's happened? Where's the, because they're so used to that kind of routine of right. this is what it looks like. But I did not feel it was meaningful. Mm-hmm. Then when I taught in Harlem, we actually created the homework the night before the next day, every single day. Like that's, a, that's just how we planned. It was intentionally built into our schedule and it was transformational really that we'd be creating our kind of morning daily check-in, our exit slips, and our homework the day before for the next day, every day on that kind of rotation. Like that was just oh, wow. during the end of the day, we would have an hour block in our contract. We would all meet together. We would create it. We would divide and conquer. You, knew where, the kids, you knew where the kids were at. Correct. Mm-hmm. For tomorrow. And that kind of trans, yeah. very similar to what you're saying of it's intentional, that transformed it. And yep. we were very tight on homework mm-hmm. um, in that aspect. And we saw a huge growth because then it's we used practice. the next day. Yeah. To add on to it, but we were looking at it. We were, it wasn't just a kind of check thing. This, check but what would you say to people? And hope maybe you can chime in on this too. Well, I'm just waiting on my turn. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know. I, didn't I was know. never given a turn. Oh, okay. Then so take I your just, turn. Let take me your turn. Yes. Oh, great. Go ahead. Take your turn. <laughs> okay. Yes. So thank you for that. I was really trying not to talk over people yeah. and oh, I've just I been just like thought. stewing. Obviously, oh, you didn't because you're ready to move on. And I'm like, yeah, is it I my didn't turn? No, I didn't get an, a dagger with your eyes or anything. But. Instead of me harping and getting on my soapbox, I thought she really had a list. <laughs> Same. I was like, How? don't worry, oh, I do. It's just in my brain. We're gonna play a little game called Love It or Leave It. Oh. Because I want to hear what you think about my soapboxes and then okay. I'll explain how I feel. Okay. And here's the thing is I am like so respectful of Oh, this is great. I'm excited about wow, this. Wow, okay. We great. all can play. Um, yeah, we all can play. Okay. <laughs> I am so Every teacher should do what gets them results for their kids. Yes. So I think that that's what's so important for me is if you're doing homework, is it getting you results? Is it getting you growth? Is it getting you gain? If so, right, it has to be results driven, right. not just habit based. Not just doing to do it. Correct. Yeah. So let's talk love it or leave it. I've okay. got some different things. Okay. I'm going to state them and I want everybody to be fully truthful 
Because that is okay. Because again, if you have found success with it, you have found Is it all about homework or no? Yeah, it's all different ho- types of homework things. Got it. Okay, so yeah. everyone's going to be honest. Okay, so everyone right. raise so your right hand. Everyone, about, yeah. everyone raise your right hand. If you're driving, keep your hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. Everyone else raise your right hand. And if you're at home, you can just say, repeat after me, say I. I. Say your name. A Pope King. Okay, no one said say your name. Say your name, okay? Promise. Promise. To be honest. To be honest. In this game. In this game. Because I'm a teacher. Because I'm a teacher. With integrity. With integrity. Okay, great. There we go. So now we have this conversation. And then if anybody has anything else to add to it, great. Okay, so the first one, we've already talked about this, but I just want to bring, I just want to talk about it a little bit more is spelling test. Love it or leave it? Leave it. Leave it. Okay, I say leave it too, and I did them too. So this is not coming from, it's a no better, do better mentality. Do your research. Because I still see so many spelling tests. You know why? Because basal reading series curriculums have them. Stop teaching a curriculum and teach kids. Just because a basal series has a spelling list does not mean you need to teach that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we now know, well, we have known. You even mentioned in second grade, you were phonics based, right? Science of reading is not new. The research, yes. Some of the research, yes. Foundational phonics. Now, if you have spelling tests that are foundational phonics based, that should be something that you're assessing their knowledge of letter sounds. It's of very, very different. Very different than memorizing, memorizing words. Letters. Correct. Right? Yeah. And spelling, and the, oh, that goes with spelling tests. I, I don't know if this is coming next, but spelling practice for homework, which is like a big yes, thing of homework. That was the like 10 years ago, it was like Monday is rainbow words, Tuesday yeah. is spelling pyramids, where it's all memorization, no phonics patterns, no foundational, and that's just yes. like busy work right. for that. And yes. then, you know what I also realized too? That's also a leave it, just disclaimer for me. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been a good speller. And so it's so either. funny. When I was in Same. high school, my dad used to say, your mama was an English major. How you can't sneak? <laughs> I'm like, what that got to do with me? Like, right. I cannot speak. I'm the math girl. Right. And so, and so I always felt like, I know I learned how to spell words when I was in school, mm-hmm. but I'm still like, wait. The f- how do I spell yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Convenience. Yeah, I need that so hard. And then you look at them and you second guess yourself and you're like, that doesn't even look good. Convenience. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you, every necessary. workshop I have, there's I'm always a that that one. I wait, can't, two C's my phone doesn't even auto-correct to necessary. I have to, you uh, have to look that one yeah. up, right? I know. It's so, Try to, because I can't And it's such it. a measure, and I hate this about spelling, it's such a measure of professionalism because people get so angry with me when I have misspellings in my workshops. And I'm like, God, I have weaknesses too. Like, yeah. And yes, yes, I can get them proofread and I need to be better at that. But even if I get them proofread, I am consistently, cha- just like teaching, I'm consistently changing things. Like right before sometimes to add, yes. edit. And I'm add, like, just give me grace, you guys. Yeah. Like y'all know what it says. Like, yes, tell me. Please tell me so I can fix it. I want to be my best, but spelling. I'm so right. Bad. But I will tell you this. When I became a teacher and I was teaching like Saxon phonics, that helped me with my spelling. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, right oh, way. it's a final stable syllable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a it's a blend. blend or a dip. Yeah. Oh, I got it now. Yeah. Correct. Or I knew the rule. Yeah. Oh, right. this is when I use it does the help. I after C. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is you know so you start to learn that kind of stuff and that did actually that does help. help. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it does. To this day, I'm, it does. I'm like because oh, it's okay. more the foundational of the reading and yeah. not mm-hmm. based a, on pattern it's a skill. And, and science. Right. Yeah, it's a skill. Okay, yeah. I have a couple more. And then if anybody yep. else has any, okay. okay. The second one is reading logs. Love it or leave it. Leave it. I definitely say leave it. I'm gonna leave it too. I mean, I will say. So is it? Is it? It's a. Lot. I want to hear what you say. Oh, then you? I'll then I'll talk okay, about it. We can say this. You're saying like, like where you write like, down what books you read that night. How long? Okay. 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 Again, as a teacher. I would I want to say leave it but as a student and a kid it's all I, right. I would have no I would have never well, maybe read. not for you but that was Bye. because you had AR a lo- here's my thing no about- no, no I'm, it wasn't even AR no my no that wasn't even with AR I remember I I would have to read because you're time. telling me that 90% of your kids aren't lying on that reading Correct. Call. Even if their no, parents, 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 their parents, parents are, are the worst liars. I had a parent one time sign all the way down the right-hand column at the beginning of the month. Before the same. Same. Was like, oh, what do you mean? Same. What do you mean they read for 20 or, minutes? Or, down the end. They put their initials on every single book all the way down. actually are reading. Their parents are working or busy and they don't actually sign Wait, it. Wait, is asking to put the camera on Wait, him. I, uh, I went done. Okay. I, I, I wasn't finished, Sorry, I, guys. So, yes, you lie. Did I lie? Yes. But you know what? If my reading log said I had to get 20 books, I wouldn't have even read three books if I didn't have that reading log. Because oh. it was a motivation. I, I will tell you this. I at least it read something. Now, if we had book it, yeah, yeah, book it. Yeah. 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 That's yes. different. That made me. That. Yes. Now, now that, that was worth book the reading log. Now, book it. Yes. That, that was worth the reading log. Because you got that personal pamphlet. And I was like, oh, y'all read it. I'll read it. 
with a book club. That is different. That is uh, completely yeah. different. So I think so uh, as as a student, yes. so Who? as a teacher, I would leave it. Like I would not do that anymore. But as a as a student, I remember. the comprehension it. test to figure out they really read those books for Pizza Hut. No, they didn't no. do that either. Exactly. But at least, it's a lie. But exactly, it's, but at least you're, you're teaching pizza. kids to it, lie no, no, and get rewarded. No, no, no. That's a free pizza every month. It if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So you, <laughs> you ain't right. cheating, you ain't trying. I'm, Lord, right. I'm raising a son with this man. Oh my lord! Hey, if you ain't cheating, you hey, ain't trying. Look, look at where I got. In SOS. Life. Oh. It but says, you know what? It also he cheated makes you on all. Read a few more books, right? What's that, guys? Sorry? This is You're, desperate. You, said and you might not have read. You might have only read three books. Did you right. just as opposed to reading more books? So it did motivate you. Yeah, I, I at least read. I wouldn't have read anything. Yeah, I don't think I, mean, I knew this was gonna be a hot. I topic. would have read because I was a reader back in those in elementary school, middle school. I was I was a reader. Yeah, I don't know what happened when I got to high school. Same but I'm not uh, so much a reader anymore for me. Well, I found books too that I liked because I had to had do to this read. dumb right. thing. But the incentive being attached to the reading log really was a boost for me. Okay, well let me ask Wade this. Okay. Since you're so about the reading logs. I'm not about the reading logs. <laughs> and we all said no. And you said, actually, so it's yes. a great question. Tell me about your reading life today. As My an reading adult. life today? Yeah. How's that going? How's that going for you? You say I read all the time. Does you, she not? If you're listening in the car, she just rolled her eyes so hard that I felt it over here. It Do I read all the time? Skip. What do I read all the time? Your phone? No, no I really I want to know. Huh? Books. Oh, I hate reading books. Okay. So what I'm saying is... I got time for that. We also have to look bigger picture at these practices and what they're doing to establish lifelong processes for right. readers. Mm. So if we're teaching them to lie, and it, okay, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. If we're teaching them to lie, mm. to get hey. seek rewards, to me, that's such a poor practice. I mean, I agree with that. And too. it's unfair because... And it's not, it's, it's not genuine, never, It's not authentic. It's not getting results. And then... Does it really translate into kids actually reading as adults? Right. Which for me, I had reading logs too. I did. I don't read as an adult, and I'm, I'm sure or there are plenty of adults reading. who had reading logs and they loved every single book and they still read today. Like I know there's all sides of this, for and sure. there's kids that fill out their reading logs, and you know yes. that yes. they read for 130 yes. minutes. Yes. I don't right. think Harry Potter one through three at all. So I don't like know. That. I think this is a we can agree to disagree on a lot of things, and that's fine too. But for me, it's. Finding other methods to yes. get them to read no. versus yeah, you know, I, readers are leaders. And if you're not reading at home, you're not elite. Like it, there's just a lot that goes in. That's yeah, I mean, no, me. I'm like statement, like leave it. But as a student, I know that it did affect me with reading books and yeah. finding books that I like to read. But then yeah. also I do read. I, read I say if you're going to be reading logs, read. you at least need AR, which I'm going to get. You, somebody go ahead and get flood my DMs, whatever. Um, but I love AR too. I mean, <laughs> or loved AR I at least too. think there needs to be accountability. Well, I did for have so that um, you can check for comprehension, yeah, yeah. and yeah. check for just like there has to be some sort of accountability it for needs what to you're be reading, meaningful yeah. to some right. degree, you know. Or you could do where they have like those reading clubs at school where you like read, the book, the book everybody's chats. reading yes. the same book, and yeah. you can have something to add to the conversation. Yeah, I was gonna say, one teacher on my team when I taught fourth grade did really well, took the reading log concept but made it based on whatever we were teaching that day. So if the target was main idea, there would just be one response question okay. for main oh, idea. Well, so it wasn't like, a, oh, what book did you read? How many minutes? And what was the author? Because honestly, who cares? But it was from whatever you're reading, like you have yeah. to choose a fiction book this week, let's say, mm -hmm. or a nonfiction book. And they were working on their same book and there was some sort of response based on that day's lesson or that week's lesson that you would kind of that's what we did. then respond. That's what Here's we did. what I love about this. Yeah. Yeah. You did journals. Journals. Here's yeah, what I love like about this. Yeah. I love this part. You're not giving them a time frame to right, read, correct, mm -hmm. or a page number to read. They might be able to read one page and do that, right? To where they are actually applying skills to reading to practice versus just reading to read. Because I know sometimes yeah. we're like, oh, if they read more, they're going to be more fluent. Mm -mm. No, that's not if, not if they're not if, practicing the correct. right skills. If they're not, if they're doing not it the right doing, way, it's not good. And I know right. there's like all these right. infographics that say if you read 20 minutes a day, you're going to know this many words. If you read yes, 30 minutes a day, the vocabulary development, yes, but, yeah, yeah. That's in the re actually reading, not just if you're comprehending turning the pages and yeah, learn the new words, then, yeah. actually reading each sentence, not reading for that, like setting a timer and being like, okay, I'm done. That's not going to build that same. Yeah. So yes, there's research in the 20 minutes a day is this, 30 minutes a day is this, or th you'll learn this many words and all the research behind that. That's if it's done to the full capacity that it's yeah. meant to be done. Right. It goes back to what you're, we were talking about at the beginning, though. It's intentional. Correct. Yeah. There's an intentional yeah. homework. Last one that I have. Love it or leave it. Projects. Oh, as homework. You're saying projects as homework. Uh -huh. Like, you know, your typical, you have this project due, like, 
maybe a teacher has like two projects a year yes. or it's like okay. they create a, a, I don't even know, a habitat. Uh, oh. I will give you my personal opinion. Well, I Le- wouldn't expect anything. Look. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave it only because if they were doing a project, I think it needs to be in, cl- find the time. If you If it's that meaningful that you want your kids to do it, I think you provide them the opportunities and resources to collaborate internally because you don't know what that child is going home, home to, to if their parents have two jobs, single parent household. Is there anyone to help them? Are they watching their siblings? Yeah. You don't know that. Because really the projects ex- are for parents. That's The projects yeah. are the parents. Correct. Projects like that is the expectation of that. Now, I grew up very privileged in a house where I had both parents to support me with that. And I remember mm-hmm. helping my brother with pro- and things like that. And that was the norm when I was in elementary school, mm-hmm. even middle school. There was projects that I'd be like, this is the October mm-hmm. book report project or like all these different things. And I've given them too. So I'm coming from the side that I've given projects. Correct. Before. Okay. Because I teach math and science. Yeah. Tell me we more. We do do a science fair project. Okay. okay. Now I will say this and I believe in it, even though sometimes it's hectic. When science fair is getting started and they have this project mm-hmm. to do. And a lot of times fourth graders are the do first that. time doing a science fair mm-hmm. project. I literally spend one day a week where this is our science fair day. So yeah. There's a lot of yeah. work that You're we do in class. Opportunity. Then at the, I also email the parents and say, hey, this is what we worked on mm-hmm. this week in class. This is the piece I need them to do at home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we also, I have a slide deck that each kid gets and they kind of fill in the slides yeah. as we go. You're providing yeah. them the resources. So there's it's a lot of, starting yeah. from the ground. You're not yeah. starting, you're not doing it all at home. It's kind of, that's kind of like that. Home. Utilize your time like you're supposed to. And if you don't yeah. use it in the class, yeah, I'll right. same way. Right. And I'll say, parents, you know, everybody worked on their hypothesis this week in class. Mm-hmm. Please make sure your child shows you what they typed up. Make sure they use mm-hmm. the yeah. sciences, yeah. da, 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 Because I can't no. check everybody. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Extent, but maybe the parents can and say, I think oh, what's right for your hypothesis? Yeah. And I think like grading, you have to be so cautious with grading to a high degree of the aesthetics of it. because And that's hard for somebody like me who is detail oriented. Yes. I go to the beauty of everything. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that to me is very much grading them based off of means at home, parents involvement. Like some projects look so beautiful, mm-hmm. whereas other kids have poured hours and hours into it, but they don't have that full support or parents are working or they don't have time or they don't have the money or the resources. The beautiful like, ones, their mom like, came back from playing tennis that morning and started working at like 11 a.m. Yeah, yeah, like, and that's I how also that get teaching kids how to give good, I think it's important to teach them how to get excellent look and how to get excellent results. But that's part of doing it in class. That's Correct. exactly right. So when we get to that part yeah. of the display board, like that's part of what we do in class too, to say, okay, y'all, this when we neat. display this, the good news is we've typed most of this stuff up. On yeah. The slide. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we've already done the typing because right. we want it to be typed. How can we make it look good? We'll look yeah. at some examples and we'll talk about, okay, what do y'all think is a good example? What do you think mm-hmm. you like or what would you want to incorporate in your board? So having those conversations in class, I think is beneficial. Yeah. Um, so do I feel like you need like a project every month? Absolutely not. Yeah. But a science fair project I hurt anybody. I think it should be a home. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's intentional yeah. homework. Yeah. That's what that right. is. And also I do see the benefit of projects for that homeschool connection of I, like, if you are actually have the time to sit with someone in your family, a sibling, a parent and work on that and having those conversations about that content, I think it's powerful. Something we shifted to. Um, projects is our family events turned into those projects. So we would okay. have the resources for them to do it. And if you attend with someone from your family, whether it's a sibling, whether it's your grandma, grandpa, aunt, That's whatever it is, idea. you would work on this kind of project based mm-hmm. learning with the support of teachers there in an like at school. What if kids' parents didn't so, show up? No, 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 no. You would have to come with your parents. It's an after school. Well, what if they didn't come because their parents didn't bring them? Oh, then that's fine. It's just another opportunity. It's not a requirement. But maybe you can make time for them to do. That's what I was gonna say. Church. That's what I'm getting at. Is some parents aren't gonna. Show oh, can you still do? Can you still have the opportunity to do it? I mean, it's not a requirement. Oh, it's not a requirement. No, 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 okay. no, no. no. It's it, just it, like it, an opportunity it, to kind okay. of bridge that. I see. At home thing as yeah. another opportunity to extend that learning thing. It's not a project that you're doing for class. Got it. Right. No. Right. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was my last love it or leave yeah, it. That was my love it. That was yeah. good. Anybody, did I miss anything? With oh, homework? I, think, I feel like that's the yeah. basics of it. I mean, I think basis good. of, yeah, just some practices that I have all done. I've done every single one of those. Yeah. But again, so that last one, I don't know. What did everyone decide though? Oh, on projects? Yeah. As homework? I think me, I think it boils down to meaningful. meaningful. And if they how are, you how you're incorporating it into your it. everyday, because with the science fair, I think that's so important for them to learn as a scientist you test, you report your results, and that's what science fair is. And, and you, also, and you so communicate the results. Yeah. And that, I mean, with writing and yeah. with yeah, yeah, yeah. speaking, listening skills, all those things. I think also be able to do it independently. Like, if yeah. you are sitting at home, can you do this project without 
someone right. going to get you the pumpkin to do this and like right. all these other like, I did a lot of the, I did the pumpkin book reports, but we did it in correct. Like I would right. have volunteers it's different come in and take them out, yep. and they would do that right. in our class. Yeah. Animal habitat, same thing. We did it in class. Right. More than like, we could do in class. Yeah, and better. you can control the collaboration. I can it. It's a great teachable like moment. Like, yeah, because yeah. I knew if projects went home, it was then a comparison was game done. of who's looked better and who. Right. And yeah. that was just a highlight on family involvement. Yeah, to me, it just a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, I knew this was going to be a hot topic, but I, April, I love that we all had different opinions, yeah, too. Oh, yeah. like, it's got uh, the whole point of this is whatever. Yeah. I think it's if it's getting results, if it's meaningful. Mm-hmm. Kids should have doing. recess before we leave and oh, yeah. and, and, and no you, silent lunch. Clarify. Just clarifying okay, that. Thank you, yeah. yeah, we got to find uh, other routes. Yes, for, yes, yeah. we do. Also, um, I forgot what I was going to say after the disclaimer, but um, I, I think also having these conversations amongst your teams could be really yeah. powerful. Oh, yeah. Like just because you've always done homework this way for the... 15 years in fourth grade, yeah. you can say, hey, why don't we try this this year? And maybe Let's see how it would I make can. it, you would see where different results. I think if mm-hmm. teachers weren't so afraid to be like, well, this is what I walked into as the new teacher. Like, it is okay to have different opinions mm-hmm. throughout. Yeah. And just because I know there are a lot of teachers that are like, well, my whole team does it this way. We have the fourth grade homework packet that goes out here. And it is okay to kind of push the boundaries a little right. bit of those I would say if you, and I think sometimes new teachers, especially, Bring your ideas. Yeah. yeah. So if you have a pushback, also have a solution. And it's coming from the there back. You go. Oh. Yeah. That, that's what I live That's on. respectful. Yeah. Yes. Like, that's, that's what respectful. I live. Say, well, I'm not sure that I want to do this, but hey, what do y'all think about this idea instead? Yeah. As opposed to just saying, well, I don't want to do that. I think just having a solution to another alternative. And I love hearing you say that because I think a lot of times you could also come from the perspective of a new person coming to you or a new teacher coming to you and say, and you go, oh, I've done that like this for 25 years. So I ain't yeah. changing anything now. Cause I hear that a lot yeah. in education. So I love But that's that about you... being an open-minded yes. person too. Yes. And I will say this, when I came to get your teacher on for the first time in 2019 in Phoenix, Arizona. Which is crazy. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I remember that. I I was pregnant. Yes, you yeah, were. I was pregnant. And I was like, I just want to try something new. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, I had been to a whole bunch of teacher conferences yeah. and stuff like that. I was like, Let's get your teacher on thing. I want to try something new. And I've been in teaching for a while. And I think that you have to just keep saying, let me try something new. Yeah. yeah. Well, let that's me- also why you have excelled. And I think stayed in this profession because you've stayed true to yourself. You've been open-minded and you've been about growth versus yeah. being stagnant. And well, I've been like this for 25 you're years. You're not so. complacent. You're, yes. you're, you always innovate. You're looking to innovate. Which, which makes it fun. It's it's not fun. Right. Yes. It's gotta be fun. You're not surviving. You're thriving. She she is. Is. There you go. She is. Well, April, <laughs> let them know where they can follow you for all things fourth grade math, all things April, all things style. If you haven't seen April's uh, the, style in Her little shimmy in all the videos is just like for me. Wait till you see the skirt I'm wearing on opening day. Oh my God. Let them know where they can follow you to um, connect with you. Okay, well, I am April all day on Instagram. I pretty much just play on Instagram. I don't do Facebook and TikTok. <laughs> Which is why it's so fun to follow you, to be <laughs> yeah, honest. Yeah, I just play on Instagram. So it's April all day there, and I share things that happen in my classroom. I share what I wear to work, which is also like a natural thing, too. I've always been like that. Like, I get dressed for work. Yeah. Um, and so it's just a fun way to share and to encourage teachers to take pride in being a career classroom yeah. teacher. I love that so much. And that's why new teachers, be careful who you follow, but this one's a good, this is who, this is who you want to follow. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That's right. Yes. 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 There we go. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of The Flip Side. New episodes launch every Monday on your favorite streaming platform. You can also watch the episode live on YouTube. If you've not already done that, make sure you tap in on YouTube to watch them in live in the studio. You can see April, her pencil necklace, all the, <laughs> all the glam, her nails, everything if you tune in on YouTube. But until then, we will catch you on The Flip, Flip Side. Bye, guys. Woo!